I'm not putting that intake on. No, dude. Every time I do, I you, you know what? It should no. You put it on. No. Every time <laughs> I do, I, we've been through this. Welcome back to part four, the rebuild. All right, we're in the process of cleaning this intake and a couple things and do's and don'ts you don't want to do. Number one, never use sandpaper in this motor. Sandpaper will cost you the bottom end. Um, two, I'm going to zoom in on the line here, and you don't want to scrape those off. You scrape those off, that scrapes the RH finish off, and you will never have it sealed correctly. Just going through to show you how clean it is. We have a little bit of area to work right there. I'm going to do the finish touch on this one because unfortunately my son is still a young technician and I prefer to do the final. That's just the way we do it around here. I'm going to show you what tools are safe to use. Good old putty knife. And after you're done scraping, take some good old brake cleaner and clean it. The key thing you're looking for is smoothness. And make sure you don't feel any speed bumps. Like we got a little bit here at this cooling port. Alright, and you want to do the same on the front bank. And after you're done, you want to spend a great deal of time with your shop back cleaning all the small residue up. All right, we're gonna finish up and then get ready to install this gasket. At this point, we've got our bolts cleaned. We've got our intake surfaces prepped. Now, it may look dirty, but it's not. That's RH staining. If you remove that, your gasket will not seal. At this point, we've got a fix-it gasket by Felpro. I'm going to show you this embedded, pregnant gasket. It's right here, it's a nice piece. It's a nice, heavy piece. So if you're ever looking at one, buying one of these cars, you can actually look down and see if there's metal and when we're done we'll show you what it looks like but this gasket right here fixes all the intake problems it even has a crush point so you can't over tighten it because these only have 88 inch pound readings which is about 7.33 foot pounds not very much and the other thing you want to make sure that your surface right there is all clean so you don't contaminate the new rubber Sweet. because there's no RTV used except for here in the corner we need to do a final wipe down real quick need a little bit of goop here before you put the new one down not a lot don't need a lot this orange is good stuff you can use black I prefer orange because it lasts longer it's good against oil contamination now put it at each corner because we gotta let this tack for a couple minutes before we put our in seals down okay on the GM 3.8 series 2 there are two styles of end gaskets 95 through 97 use the light blue before that use this one this one we're not going to use this is an extra part that one's from 97 and above at least that's what it said at O'Reilly's yeah I believe that because this actually has to have a block provision which we don't have so. which we do not have clearly so these garbage we use these Just seen the glop they had. I believe it. <laughs> that was factory. What color was it? It was brown. And so no, it wasn't anything that we could get our hands on. Okay, just to give you a last look at what it should look like, prepped, ready to go. Should be a dab at each corner. Gasket should be sitting correct. Should have a dab. Make sure it's sitting flush which this is. Uh, if you had oil or uh, coolant ingestion, run some oil through here. Make sure you got good clean oil and if any bad oil, get it to the pan, change your oil. Don't even start this with the bad oil, get that oil out. You're going to want to do a couple premature oil changes though. Uh, I would give it like every 2,000, every two months. 
Uh, we might recommend sooner for this one. Might be one month and then go two and then three to normal after that. All right, we're about ready to put the intake on. All right, here we go. Threw a little bit of the weasel back in by the way we tore it apart, but we did that to save time and reassembly, which you'll see here shortly. I try to keep it up as high as I can until I'm ready to drop it down. All right, see, get it back in its home. Okay, just that easy. Good, good, good. What I'm doing is I'm making sure the gasket is aligned. Sometimes these things can move a little bit on you. Whoa, what are you doing? What's getting the bolts on? One thing that's very important on this job, you must seal your bolts. Don't use RTV to do this, you use the proper sealant. If you want the right results, use the right products. We'll go through the torquing procedure here in a quick minute. We gotta get all these bolts loaded with goop and then uh, run them down. All your bolts should go in by hand. Should not need any extra force at all. Some might need a little give, but you shouldn't need no more than your hand to rotate it. But the bolt heads are small, so what I'm doing is I'm actually doing a line. And I'm shoving it in the bolt with my hand. It's nice to see an intake now full of oil or water. <laughs> Well, we've done everything right up until this point, and you know, hope we can make sure this engine sees 250,000 before it does something stupid like, you know, bend a connecting rod. Alright, one thing about two piece manifolds like this one where it has an upper and a lower, the uh, intake torque sequence is different. We're actually going to start at one and we're going to go all the way around in a circle as opposed to like most intake jobs where you start from the center and work your way out. This one is not that case. One actually starts right here. We're going to start off, we're going to do this in two rounds. These inside ones are a little trickier because of the angle of them. We'll run them down until they just stop, and then we'll run through the torque sequence. And we're just going around in a circle. Yep, these do not require a lot of torque. You're going to hate life if you try to over torque these. Should have been one right here, see if we can reach it. Alright, now that you got all your bolts run down, now we'll go through final torque. There we go. Okay, and that concludes the torque. That was three passes. These were three eighths inch bolts, not tens. Some three eighths, maybe 10 mils. Some maybe three eighths inch American standard bolt, which this one was. All right, now we're gonna continue on.